right, all right, all right. Everyone, please welcome Cam Duncan to the show. We've been connected on Twitter for I don't know how long. It's been years at this point. <laughs> it's been yes. years. So uh, Cam is an expert in the digital marketing side. I've seen him put together some amazing websites, some funnel stuff. Um, and I think this is a guy you need to talk to if you're new to the online business space because he's going to help you get set up in the basics of business because most people are overlooking this part but what cam does is super important cam welcome to the show appreciate it man it's been a long time coming um i'm really excited to talk to you today uh just about everything to do with websites and funnels because i myself i was never an expert i started out not knowing anything when we first connected right i was just trying to learn uh trying to find my way in this space and uh, I've managed to build something out of nothing. So I feel like a lot of people listening that feel like it, you need to be an expert to begin. It's not the case. Like, and I, I feel like I represent that quite well. Right. You know, I think that's all of us though. Everybody starts, I, I, it's really a test of entrepreneurship if you're really built for it, because in the beginning, I would say for the first year, I kind of had that feeling of, am I qualified? Am I doing enough? And you don't really know. Like when I first started, I did not have any of this equipment. And like I was just in the bathroom with nothing. So <laughs> I think yeah. we all start from the bottom, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I, I remember seeing like on your Twitter feed, like you like perched up with your, like this real, like uh, put together setup. And now you've got the whole uh, thing going on. <laughs> that, it's, it's awesome, man. Like it's good to see like the growth. But that, that's the thing that people overlook is that the growth is all part of like the journey and that's the part that actually makes it fun and then when you use like twitter or whatever you use to share your journey that's how you build relationships like you and i have uh, i've built hundreds of relationships now that will serve me forever and um in, in the best kind of way like you don't do it to get the the rewards but they just naturally it's a byproduct of building relationships is the rewards you receive from from doing this kind of thing um and we'll, like as you mentioned we've connected hundreds of times but that same network effect and it, like funny like that's the name of the, the show but like the networked <laughs> effect is like it's true man like you who would have thought that i'd be up early in the morning in australia speaking to you about websites like that's just the age we live in but like it's just that's the power of this kind of thing that we can really take advantage of man it, and it's, it's super useful um so i want to talk to you a little bit about the funnels a little about the mm -hmm. websites and let me ask you this well i, I got a pre-question before i ask my main question Okay. Is it possible to have a funnel without a website? Yeah, well, that's, I think that's a misconception that a lot of people get. Everything, everyone has a funnel. It just determines how good your funnel is. So if you have a Twitter feed and it leads to a website, that's a funnel. Whether it's any good and it actually converts, that's up to how well you can design, how well your, your, uh, your flow is set up. So the easiest way I define a funnel whenever, because people, that's the number one question, right? What is a funnel? People always hit me with that. And I say, look, man, it's taking your customer on a journey from interaction, your first interaction to your first sale, to your upsell, to your like whatever's next. That's your, that's your customer journey is actually your funnel. It's just your mm -hmm. lead funnel. The top of your funnel is capturing everyone. So what we're doing now, it's a perfect example of a top of funnel content that we're making. Uh, obviously, we're just having a chat. We're, we're, we're getting to, to know each other better, but it's, it is an example that will draw more people to both of our funnels in the future. Uh, so, yeah, you can have a funnel without a website, but uh, it is mm. recommended to have a website uh, to make your funnel more optimal and be able to track the conversion rate that you're, you're getting people from social media to buying your products. Oh, I love that. I love that. I think, I, I think funnels are important. I know they are. Um, I think funnels have gotten a bad rap and a bad reputation because of like click funnels. I know people who like millionaires who own software companies who like have thousands of users, you know, they're making a million dollars a month. Some of these people and they hate click funnels. They absolutely hate it. So, uh, let me, I want to, my specific question is how do you feel about click funnels? Like, is it necessary or would you be better off building something outside of that? Well, the, ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, the, the create like the creator of ClickFunnels, he's a genius, man. He just gets it. He understands it all. The putting funnels into a software practice is difficult, and he's tried to make it as simple as possible. And the more simplified you make something, the more you open up to scammers, 
people that try yeah. and use use things for the for the bad reasons, right? Because it's so simple. Um, so that's where I think click funnels has got a bad rap. But I really believe if you're a beginner, something like a click funnels or a funnel building software is what you kind of want to use to get your feet wet in the in the area in the space because you understand the sequence that customers have to go through. Uh, you go from you know capturing leads to your first sales page, creating that. Because if you're trying to code something from scratch, you're going to get frustrated and just give up, right? Uh, whereas if you can just drag and drop and put things into place, it makes things a lot easier. And ClickFunnels is a really good program for that. And they have good the, – the, the education that comes along with it is what makes ClickFunnels ClickFunnels. And like if you've read any of the – uh, documentation they put out and stuff like that you really get a simplified version but that like i said it opens it up to the scamming side of things but as a whole i think the company's great hmm. okay okay i wanted to get your perspective on click funnels because mm-hmm. it's just it's such uh it, i think the scammers like you said the people that use it they're the loudest they're mm-hmm. louder than the people that use it correctly and I think yep. that's the problem is the, the kind of the bad people are the loudest for it. And they give it such a bad name. Like I have people that reach out to me to this day. One actually reached out to me yesterday on Facebook. Like, Hey, I can set up your funnel. And it's <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I know it's necessary. It's mm-hmm. just, I think, I, I think there are other things that people should be focused on early on. But let me ask you, what do you think somebody should start with first? If they're building an online business, they have only, let's just say three months in their specific niche. Like should right. they be building a website? Should they build a funnel? Should they build products first? Like how does this work? Uh, well, I'm actually creating documentation around this right now. Probably like call it a course, but I'm just trying to create something to help people get started. But Besides the point, the five stages that I think people should go through, you, you start off with with the dream, right? Like I'm I'm inspired. I like for me it was funnels. I started off trying to because I play basketball as well, but I was like my dream is to be a basketball coach around the world. So that was my dream. The next step you have to go to is to be a reporter, right? And that's what you're doing right now. You go and talk to other experts in the area to make sure that your skills stack up against everyone else. Because if you just start posting content and your claims and uh, all the information you have isn't verified by other experts, you're not going to make any noise. It doesn't matter what. So if you, that's true. That's, the key. That is a, that's, that's a the, good point. <laughs> right. So if I'm out here just talking about funnels all the time and I don't have anyone to back it up or retweet me or put like say and verify what I'm, what I'm saying is true, I'm not going to get any traction. So that's step number two is to do this whole podcasting, reach out, talk to other people, tweet, comment on their things. Like that's what you should be doing initially to verify what you're talking about is true. And then once you get into that space, that's when you build your first funnel. And that's when you want to, the number one thing you want to capture is those leads, right? The emails, the phone numbers, whatever it may be. So that's probably step number one is to make sure you have a passion because you don't want to work on what you're not passionate about, right? And then you want to go and talk to people in your space and make sure what they're talking about, what you're talking about is verified by other people in the space. Uh, Once you do that, put out something for free and then just capture emails for that free product. And then you're that's that's that that free point is meant. Listen, I know a lot of people hate that. They're always talking about get paid what you worth. But I tell people this all the time when I speak at events, like my first two years in the podcasting industry, I was working for free. Like people would just go to my calendar and schedule appointments. And we would talk for sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes two hours. And Mm -hmm. I just gave away free game for years. And it might sound like it's a waste of time, but for me, it helped really set a foundation to where now I can write books on it. I can put out courses. I have a great community in the podcast profit club now. Um, and I also have software. I have multiple software mm. tools now that help podcasters, podcast hosts, editors. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't did that free trial at the beginning of my career. So yeah. when Cam says do it for free, don't get afraid. Like, oh, I'm not making any money. The money is going to come. I promise you. Yeah, 100 percent. My Like to give some personal backstory. You watched me for years on the timeline, bro. I was making websites for free for these guys. They only have 10,000, like 15,000 followers on Twitter. But to me, they're, they're that next level that I want to be like, right? Yeah. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to help these guys. I'm, I bought their products. I was, I was a customer of theirs and I went 
and built a sales funnel for their product. Now, a lot of people said it was dumb, said it was crazy, but from that, just last week, I had my first $5,000 week making websites. No, I'm not, not saying that to brag, I'm saying to prove the process works. You watched me do free stuff for three years, but now you got to see the results of that. So you know yeah. what I mean? Like that that's um that's a testament to how working for free and that's probably the next stage after you build your first funnel is like, all right, you've built your free you put your free um lead magnet, whether that's an ebook, a free video course, uh free service, and then you wanna go out there and give that to people that are in that upper you don't want to go straight to the top. Like I, I couldn't go to Elon Musk or whatever and build him a website. He's not got, that's not going to work. Everyone's trying that, right? Go where you might actually get a response. Just go to that little next step up. And then if you continually do that, every level you rise, eventually you're going to get to the top. It's just a matter of time. Um, so that's, that's that next stage. Once you've got something for free, whether that's a skill or a product, go to the next level up and then just keep serving just mm. keep serving each level above and you're going to keep rising as you go. I, I love that. I love it. I, I don't think people think about it as serving. You know, I think that's mm. what's helped me with my funnels. Uh, Cause in the beginning I tried to do the tripwire products and all these different mm. things. I had to really create my own style um, because nobody works with podcasters the way that I do. Yeah, um, new new it, niche. It's, it's, unique. it's super new. It's only 2 million podcasts. You know, it's not like yeah. YouTube where there's 31 million YouTube channels. This is just a different yeah. ball game. So I had to find my own way to get those leads, to nurture them, build a relationship. Um, so uh, let me ask you this. What's, what do you think is the number one nurturing strategy? Because for me, I know it's popular to say use emails, but for me, <laughs> I use my podcast episodes. And yeah. they work extremely well. I actually put them inside of my email sequence. So I'm kind of using mm. email too, but I don't focus on as much copy there. I put more of my content. So what do you think is the best nurturing tool in 2021? Yeah, well, I think you said it best. Uh, the delivery system and the content are completely different things. Um, so whether you're using email, whether you're using text message, Personally, I use a Telegram group because I'm international from the US and all my, a lot of my followers are in the US. If I tried to do either of them, the timing isn't going to match up, right? Like right now I'm talking to you at six in the morning, which is fine. I love getting up early. <laughs> but like if I'm messaging you or emailing you at 6 a.m., you're going to be pretty upset. <laughs> like, and then it, for you guys, it's late at night. Um, you guys are going to be pretty upset with me, right? And that's not a really good way to nurture things. So the delivery system is more of a choice that suits your audience but the content is either audio visual or um, written a lot of people chose that written uh style but now let's be honest do you really read things on your phone like who, who reads <laughs> things on their phone besides a tweet that's 280 characters no no not many people anyway if you gotta if you're driving to work if you're going for a run if you're going for a walk you pop in the in the headphones, man. And like, why wouldn't you want to listen to a podcast? Why wouldn't you want to just sit on the couch and watch a video? I think content is moving towards that audio visual if it already has not anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's more impactful this way. Cause when I, I sold my first course, I'll never forget. It. I made my first thousand dollars online. Oh my God. That was a great day. <laughs> Amazing. But I realized she, the person that bought it didn't read any of the emails. She was actually reading all of my tweets, all my threads, and then responding on Twitter. And I'm like, why is she on my email list if she's not going to yeah. read the emails? And then she just bought yeah. it. I was like, wait, I wrote all these emails for nothing? So that's when I yeah. started deciding to, um, I created my own podcast episode style. Like, I have mm. very specific episodes I produce on this show just so I can nurture my email subscribers. And that yeah. has been working amazing. So what's your personal style? Like, do you talk to your clients to see what works for them or do you kind of suggest things like hey this is the path you should take i because i'm just getting in I, i've transitioned from being a service provider into sort of like a coach slash mentor space so i'm still new to that thing i haven't even released a course yet or anything like that um i'm still just working on my craft i want to make sure i'm 100 percent. but the people that i'm working with right now like in a mentor kind of role um I just, I just hit them with a voice message every day and we just talk and back and forward talk and they just ask questions. And then I take that down and write that down as a, like a note. And that's what I'm going to use for content in the future. Cause if one person has that question, chances are there are a thousand people out there that are too scared to ask that question. 
So oh, man, man listen, that two years I spent talking to podcasters, um, I documented it very well. I talked to over 500 hosts and I learned like, man, most of those people had the same questions, like so much. So it was so easy to put together a course on it just because I had talked to so many hosts up until that point. Um, it made it really, really easy, you know, and that was just, that was a game changer. So, uh, I want to talk to you about websites now mm. when it comes to websites, what are like your main rules you follow when creating these websites? Cause I personally believe that if you have a personal brand, you gotta have a website, you yeah, have to, it's 100%. not debatable. You gotta have one. So what are the kind of the rules you follow to give people some barriers to think about? Uh, yeah. So the, we. I'll touch on the first point. Yes, you need a website. Number one, it's the new <laughs> bi business card. That's the new that, that is like, um, if you message from a business email, like uh, I have one like Duncan Media is my, you know, handle or URL that currently doesn't have a website I'm currently working on it, the amount of clicks that Duncan dot media has gotten that people are that's missed traffic that I'm missing on. So if you have a business like email, and it's not leading to a, you know, an actual website, you're going to miss so much free traffic because people want to search who's emailing them, especially if you're doing cold email outreach, like trying to like, if you pop up in the inbox and you don't have a profile photo, uh, your, mm. your website doesn't lead anywhere. Who's going to, who's going to like respond back to you. Right? So that's number one. It's the new business card. You, you want to put your face to, to what you're, you're sending out there. And then even if I did this podcast now, if I didn't have a website to send people to, where are all these people going to go to learn more about me that are interested? Not saying that it, like that's the reason we do this stuff, but that, that's just the byproduct of online content creation, right? Where where is all this traffic that people are listening to going to go? So you yeah. need to have a, a home base that everyone can just go get a quick summary of who you are, and if they're interested in working with you, you know, uh, that then so be it. They they go and follow the but steps. You you know what's crazy? I talk to podcasters all the time, and they're like, I don't need a website. I send them to iTunes, and I'm just like, you don't understand. Like, well, I think iTunes is good. It, it, it is good to send your content, send people to, but you don't control those people. Um, you have to send it to your platform, and that's not even – one thing you did mention is that missed traffic, but even a retargeting feature? Like, mm -hmm. let's just say one of your episodes goes viral. If you link it to your website – and now yep. you have 10,000 people that visit, visited your website. You can run a Facebook ad retargeting those 10,000 right. visitors. Now right. you can really blow your list. And I know this because again, I've done it the wrong way where I missed out on traffic and I've done yeah. it the right way where I capitalize. So mm -hmm. is that something you help people with too? Like retargeting ads and stuff like that? Or is it just a funnel work? I, I work with the strategy. I don't do the actual, you know, uh, the groundwork and, uh, I'm not an expert at it, man. I would never ever touch something. I'm not hundred percent confident in I can deliver. However, I have a lot of people that I, I like partner with or set, I refer people to just because I know they're experts at it. Um, but I understand the, you, the, the thing is with service providers, you need to understand what comes before your service and what comes after. So if you make a website, and you don't know how people get traffic to the website or you don't know how people can retarget and do follow-up funnels and follow-up uh, sales and stuff like that like even email marketing and stuff like that you're not going to have much success making a website because you don't understand the full scope of what you're delivering um, and that goes for all things if you're a back-end uh, service provider like ads or uh, follow-up ads or marketing email wise you need to understand how a website works and because you know those annoying pop-ups that come on websites every oh. every <laughs> it's so annoying right uh, nobody clicks use, it yeah. if you listen into this and you make those stop it because yeah, i'm not stop it. when that happens to me i immediately i'll lead a website i gotta go i gotta go yeah because you just told me <laughs> getting my email is more important than me getting the content because right if you just put it up there even a minute after i've been on a website that's better mm -hmm. or even 30 seconds or if you put it at the bottom let me choose. Don't just put it up there as soon as I click on a page. Yeah. No, I don't even want to read anymore. It's, it's, I'm so, I had to rant on that. I'm sorry. No, that's facts. <laughs> that's facts because it, it's intrusive. You want to make the customer journey, and that's the whole part of the funnels, right? The customer journey as frictionless and as smooth as possible. Um, and I think a lot of people that don't understand all the steps miss out on that when they're creating a website. So to go back to your last question, the creative constraints we like to give people when they're making their websites 
is we want to be as 100% conversion driven as possible. So mm. all of our website, whether they're a landing page, whether it's a full website, a personal brand, whether it's an e-commerce store, everything's leading to one action. Um, whether that's for yourself, you want to book a podcast guest, right? Or, or sell a course or sell a product. The goal of the page is all driven to one thing. Now that's a little Ooh. difficult when you've got multiple things to send people to. But I got a why, question about that. Yeah. Before you keep going, I got a question. This is, this is where it gets interesting because I'm not the only one that has this question. Mm -hmm. For me, I help podcasters in three different ways. I help okay. them launch their show, market their show, and monetize their show. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, on that website, would it be better to have a button they click to just join the list and then I separate them after they're on the list? Or should I have three different buttons they can click so they can go straight to the list of their choosing right there? I would do to the list of their choosing because the, the fact is the attention span is so small right now in, in all human beings, I, myself included. Uh, if I'm looking for information, I want it as fast and as quick as possible, as specific as possible for what I'm looking for. Uh, if I have to sit through two or three days of email sequences to get the information I'm looking for, you've, you've lost me. And, the, and I'm pretty sure that's the key with most people, right? Mm. Uh, so I think you're first couple of pages whenever people find you in google uh, like cold traffic right they, they don't know much about you you need to tell people what you do first and foremost and then you need to outline what you offer and then you need to introduce some sort of uh buttons and choosing of where they can go right so if if i was consulting your personal brand i would have it so that what you do past examples of what you've done and then what category does each person fit in and that's how we would sort of structure your website. And then once they choose their path, everything's optimized to get them to convert on that specific choice that they've made. I love that. I love that. See, I don't know if y'all can tell, but Cam is an expert. I asked him that question so he could show his expertise. Because <laughs> I, I, one thing I've learned is people that don't know what they're doing, instead of saying, I don't know, they like to BS you, but people that do know what they're doing can give you a specific strategy right there. And I yeah, think that has to be, that has to be like imprinted, ingrained in your personal brand, the ability to kind of do it on the fly. Uh, I think it's a skill you develop only after you actually have done the work. Like in the beginning, you don't really have that skill because you don't, you don't, don't you don't know enough and you yeah. don't know what you don't know. So now when somebody asks you a question and you don't have an answer, that's when you BS and you tip a toe around it and you <laughs> never get to the point. <laughs> but mm. if you know it, you can like, if somebody asks me for uh, how do I market my show or how can I monetize this type of show? I can answer them because yep. I've done it and I've done the work. So, uh, man, I, I just had to point that out. I noticed that you've done the work. I can tell. Mm. I have another question for you about the software side of building a website. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit on Twitter. Um, yeah card is really really popular right now because mm -hmm. it's so easy to use it's so simple would you suggest somebody using card a simple one page website or should it be something like wordpress where it's like eight pages much more in depth well uh, it, so it depends what level you're at of course uh if your business is at a, at a high level and you have multiple services that you offer a card page is going to limit you right um I would, I started with card, uh, when I first started making sites and stuff like that, the secret to card is you can actually put section breaks or, uh, they're like, uh, they're like container breaks. I think the, the actual name is, and you can separate and actually create multiple pages within card, which is really powerful. And that's how you can mm. actually create funnels or websites within card. It's, it, it's super powerful. And, um, I think a lot of people miss that fact and they just make a little landing page that leads somewhere else. But if you nurture people through the actual website journey, cards are perfect thing to get started with after a certain period of time. And you start actually selling products and you've gone past that, uh, give away free lead stuff. I would look at, you know, a, a web flow, a click funnels. I have my own SaaS. I'm not trying to pitch it or anything. It's all the same sort of stuff, <laughs> but you know, um, like I've made mine specifically for that reason. Uh, but Webflow I use as well. I'm actually, my course, I'm actually going to launch on Webflow um, instead of my own personal thing, just to show the, the different things you can use. I don't want to just be one dimensional. You want to be able to use different softwares and stuff like that as a web designer. Because how can you teach people if you can only teach one skill? 
if I was like coaching basketball and I only taught you how to shoot one shot from one spot, I wouldn't be a very effective coach. I want to be able to show you how to make different shots from different spots. I love that. I love it. I, I will tell you, pitch it, pitch your software. I have episodes <laughs> on this show where it's me building in public, mentioning the mm. software and talking about it. You know, I think, I think software is where everybody should be going in this digital world, you know, because yeah. it's one of the best ways to get paid consistently um, with, a uh, lighter workload you don't have to work yeah. as, as much yeah it's hard work you still got to be focused on all of that but it's nowhere near as strenuous like i've done much more difficult jobs than sitting at a computer and making sure this goes to this and that works like mm. that's fairly easy compared to what i've personally done um but yeah tell us about your software man let the people know all right cool um so quick creates is my or dot com is my software funnel building software right and, um, and it took me hours. I put a hundred different templates in there. So there's a hundred, you just click on it and it goes and you, you don't need to do any of the building. You just change the words and change the pictures. So for people that are listening that want to try funnels, there's a 14 day free trial. Just go give it a go and see if you can build one because it's essentially card, but stacked on top of each other. So you can, and then it has like one click upsells as well, which is I'll touch on that in a second, but if you're building a card website and you try and integrate Gumroad or whatever course platform you're trying to sell your product on, it's going to lead them somewhere else. And that's it's a, a problem headache. because that the attention span is what loses people, right? Mm -hmm. If it starts redirecting and the load speeds going and you have bad internet, like I do uh, in the country <laughs> of Australia, you, you're going to lose interest and just cancel it. Right. Uh, but if you, your software, whether it's, you know, whatever it is you're using, but mine, it stays in house. So everything like all the page redirects are super fast because it's only got to load one domain. And then that like all the contents preloaded. So you just go in, you read the first sales page, people are interested, wow. they, they click and then it goes to the next page. And then the one click upsell, once they put in their billing information, that's when you upsell because once someone's given you their credit card, you go, Hey, I've got an extra product. If you want to add on, it's a lot easier to say yes once you've already given them the credit card, uh, once you've already handed over the money, right? Um, so that's a key for a lot of business owners that they miss. They try and do these upsells before they get the, the billing information. Ooh, yeah. Don't yeah, do and that. that and that messed just... me up. That messed me up too. I can say I did a really bad job with that when I put a book out. Um, mm -hmm. I was just so, I was I, put, I had a book, I had the workbook, the course, I had um a whole group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching program I was going to do. I'm excited. Mm. Then I realized like I got to sell a book first and I didn't yeah. sell the book. So I couldn't sell anything right. else. Yeah. I can tell you, man, that was a big failure. <laughs> it, it, it's true, man. Because if you like, it'd be like if you're going out on a date, right. And you're on a date and you try and go straight to the last step without <laughs> even having dinner first, you know, um, yeah, um, it's a family friendly podcast. I don't want to, you know, uh, go, go too deep, but you know what I'm saying? Um, if you try and make the, the final move before you have dinner and a conversation, you, the things aren't going to go too well. Uh, so the same thing with your customer journey, you need to sell your, your first product or your free product up front and provide value so that people understand, okay, look, he's, he's actually knows what he's talking about. I enjoy his product. I'm going to choose these upsells, but it happens in a matter of minutes with these one click upsells, because you can just go straight from a free product. And then the way you structure your, your sales pages and stuff like that has to be like a conversation. Like, Hey, look, I see that you've bought this first product. I've made, I've made this add on product for those people that want to go a little bit faster. I've made this add on product for people that want to uh, want me to do it for you. So if I was, when I was building my web design agency page, we give away a free template on how to build your website but then on the back of that we upsell the done for you version where we'll do it for you so you don't even Ooh. have to worry about reading like that's that's that's, a, nice. that's an example yeah i like that i like that man this, this this has been a fruitful conversation you know i'm glad you had a chance shout out the software quickcreates.com everybody uh cam uh, before we go i got one last question for you mm-hmm and I access to podcasters, but not access to person people who have a personal brand too, because I find that we're all really the same. Yeah. If you could interview one person dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, 
being a basketball player and being someone like that, I just love the game so much. Uh, I would have to say, honestly, right now, I would have to talk to LeBron, man. I have to talk to him. I want to I want to speak to him. Uh, like the whole dead or alive thing, uh, there is definitely people in the past, but if I can speak to him right now and just ask him, pick his brain, basketball, he's the smartest basketball player I've ever seen, but then also the what he's doing off the court, Ooh. combining entrepreneurship and athletics, that's my passion. Seeing man. Uh, athletes go from like amazing what they do to amazing in the business world another one i would have to say is like kobe as well but like you know it's, it's still it still hurts but yeah yeah LeBron I'm, and kobe, I'm, the... I'm still with you on all of it um that's kind of people that listen to the show know that's where i started um but when mm-hmm. i started podcasting actually i had a basketball show i had a whole sports podcast network i was a part of a major company there Um, I played professionally. I played in college. I was training. I did writing like basketball was my entire life at one point. Um, So I'm with you on that, man. That's a really good answer. I think LeBron is like he's setting the mold for a new type of athlete. I don't think we talk about that enough, but him and his whole team at Clutch Sports, like it's not just one little small thing like basketball. They're doing everything. So it's been a game changer. So let people know where they can find you online, too. Yeah, uh, so my Twitter is where I'm most active. So it's at Cam Duncan, and then at the ends at the end is four. So Cam Duncan with four ends, and then um, just quickcreates.com or quickcreates.agency. Those are my two websites. Go there, and we can chat. We can talk websites all day long. I can talk about it all day, <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to. All right, Cam, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Let's do it again sometime. All right.